Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. <clears throat> Today we're going to take a look at Caustic 3.2. Uh, so, you know, I did a Caustic video ages and ages and ages ago and it surprises me that not everybody should know about Caustic. Uh, so Caustic is not an expensive uh, app to buy, but it is an incredible app. It's very, very CPU efficient, whatever you do with it. And is, if you can just see there, there's a little tiny green neck where it says framed, which is the name of this track. There's a little tiny, you can't even see it, but that's the CPU meter. You'll 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 have trouble making it work, really seriously. I I mean I'm talking about iPad twos here and fours and stuff like that. So there is a temptation with Caustic to make it uh, do electronic -y type music, but I I like to use it for other more stranger kind of stuff. I mean it'll do completely pretty pretty much anything you want it to, but but we're gonna do a quick explore. So I've got. It's a little track set up, which isn't my usual kind of track. But we're going to have a look around Caustic in a sec as well, before I start to do other tutorials for it. So as I'm going to, because you can, there's so much cool, cool stuff you can do. But we have, as you can see, five tracks. We have uh, two pad synths, a PCM synth, beatboxes, and everything could be renamed, as I will show you in a sec, or in other videos we do. Well, first of all, I've got this little thing. It's a four bar loop, basically, that I've set up. And here are the, the, the first drums. Now, the only effects on these drums now is this delay and reverb here. I'm going to take that off. And let me take the width off as well. Now, for such a simple, simple mixer, it's amazingly, it just sounds great. You can see I've got some EQ going on here, bass, mids and highs. So let's add that little bit of reverb back in. A little bit of delay. <clears throat> now these are global delays, okay, that you can set up below. I'll show you that as well. So let's add this one. And let's put some width back in this drum. Actually, let me show you how cool the width sounds. Yeah. Spreads that right out. And let's add this PCM synth. So, the quickest way to work around Caustic is because it's built in like a great big rack, like a massive rack. So hit this here, and you go to the synth that you want, and you can see that I've got some I just put some depth on that too. I wanted it to sound strange. If we long hold on any any synth or any device like this, we can rename it, and I will call this a uh, 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 sitar. Sitar uh, wob done, and it changes the name of the device. See, <clears throat> so that gives it when you're in your jump to position an idea of what's going on so we get to go back to the mixer and add all the other bits in now there's nothing in this one and I'm going to call this fair organ Fair org, it all that was it, fair org. So let's solo it. And there is a patch that's similar to a fairground organ type type of thing. And I'm just gonna add some of that over the top of what we've got. Now now caustic works in a certain way as well. So for every single synth or instrument you have, underneath will be 
it's MIDI control sort of thing. It's track information. It's, you know, how long you want the beats to go on for. You can go up to eight eight bars. Okay, so I've got this set of four bars. So you do have to work within Caustic's limitations, okay? So you have a quantize on, which will be the two, the two little lines outside the box. And you have quantize off. I'm going to use quantize off for this. Excuse me, just one sec. Right, sorry about that. I'm back again now. Uh, I'm going to use quantize off for this, for this, okay? Because I, I'm not particularly bothered about it being bang on the money. All right. So also as well, this the way you have this position will affect how you see the grid as well. So you can see that I'm on A1. That's pattern A1. And there's my. You can go to your grid reference and you can see that we're spread across four bars they're like this however if i set this like this i will see all four bars but if i was to have quantize switched on now it would only let me record one note per bar you see what i'm saying and this is how where grid quantization comes in okay if you think about it you'll you'll, you'll see what i mean however i've got quantize turned off so it means that i can see my full length of four bars and not have to worry about it lock into any particular part of a grid okay so let's get to the counting section now um, when i first reviewed this it didn't have a counting so you just had to wait for it to loop around and then start recording again however now if you long hold let me just say as well in caustic anything that has a little darkened out corner or a, 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 a recolored corner means that you can long hold and it'll bring up another sub menu this gives you the volume of your click and how many bars, and you can count up to four bars, okay? The counting, now I, I like two bar counting. It's just the way I've always, always worked. Most people just get away with one bar, but I like two bars, because I like to get, know where I'm going. So what'll happen is, let's re I'm gonna record my section over that. Now also as well, bear in mind that I could mute out particular tracks, because I'm recording on pattern A1, I have 64, possible patterns for each each instrument okay man i don't know that's just ludicrous over the fact that you can have up to 14 slots okay and so you again you're working within caustic's limitations but you know it doesn't matter you the things you can do it caustic are incredible um so let's go i'm gonna i'm gonna hit record and every time i, I start playing with caustic i love it even more and more so here's my thing so i'm just gonna I'm going to record this uh, thing and then I'm going to show you some other cool stuff before we go so we don't go on too long. Right, so we don't, we hit record like that and you can see it's flashing around the side of the screen and then as soon as we hit play, I'll get started to get my count in. go so we can switch that off now now what i want to do is i want to i got my two beat boxes uh, which i could rename you see my sitar wobbly thing my pad synth my fairground organ and i have my mix and now also if we hit effects here <clears throat> we can see that we can put two insert effects in to each of our things so let's for instance let me play so let's just affect the fairground organ and these are all our effects we get to choose from so i wouldn't bother using the reverb because we have a global reverb don't we so I might use, say, uh, chorus. Chorus doesn't really work for me with that. Let's try, uh, what about some uh, vinyl simulation? Which is a bit scratched and very old. Okay, or well, we can remove that. Let's try an auto wah. 
So you can see that we can apply any effects and we can um, up, apply it twice. And while we're here, let us have a look at the master effects. These are what I was saying. These are our delay and reverb for our mixer. So below the mixer is your master effects section. So here's the delay for... And this is what's controlling these. See? So we can switch them on and off there. We also have a global EQ. Let me turn the reverb off so you can hear it. You have the e each EQ for your thing, but you have the global EQ for the entire mix here. So that will affect your whole mix in the limiter. Plus it allows you to add another two insert effects here and here which will also be global as well cool beans so let's go back to um oh, okay. not just the dot. now i know that everything i've recorded so far has been pattern a1 so it's pattern a1 for the beatbox pattern a2 for the beats the other beatbox pattern a2 for the sit warp sit our warp and pad synth and etc so if i go to our sequencer now you will see that we have our, and you can have up to 14 of these. I just knocked that, ah, okay. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that we have our two beatboxes, our sit warp. Now if we play, if we, now here's the important thing. It, uh, it has two modes basically, song mode and pattern mode. What I found is sometimes very occasionally, accidentally, I've been in song mode. I've gone to one of my instruments, started to record, causes all sorts of problems. Don't, don't be very, very, very careful. That once you're recording with a MIDI keyboard or you're inputting notes, etc., make sure you're in pattern mode, not in song mode, okay? Because it tends to record all sorts of strange information you don't need. Right, okay. Now, what we how we want to do now, so we're in song mode, right, or pattern mode. It doesn't matter for this point, but once you're in the sequencer, just go to song mode. It's easier. Makes more sense. All you need to do is tap on one section and go, oh, I'll add section one to that. And there it goes, there's our two bars. Now say for instance, we didn't want to bother doing this. Okay, what we can do is tap on this. Let me just, I'll tell you what, let me just delete that last one I put in. So anything highlighted you can select and stuff like that. If I want to just tap on it, if I want to just extend that, I can just grab that there, hit this here, which will allow me to draw out a1 over as many bars as I like and it will be it won't stop sort of thing it'll just carry on it's, it's superb we're going to just make keep it keep it straightforward for this and we shall add um, a1 there as well actually I was too I did I went too far There we go. That's the other cool thing as well. Say, for instance, you've got a track on it all the way down here on like track 14 or something here. You can just tap on it. I'll show you. You can just tap on it like this. Sorry. Tap on that and then hold that and then drag it out without having to sort of touch that. Anyway, that's just one of them little shortcut things. So we've got A1 there, A1 there, and we'll put A1 there as well. And we'll put A1 there. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll bring our other beatbox in here. Okay, so A1, okay, A1, A1, cool beans. And then we'll bring our Sitari Wub thing in there. And I I recorded that, sorry, over the, these were two bars. I recorded the in, that instrument, and I think maybe probably this instrument over four bars. So what we can do now, which is very cool, I'll show you. So I want that block to repeat again. So what I can do is select this and then select all those. Okay. And then just basically I need to uh, copy, copy and paste. Now where it pastes dependent on where you are in your timeline. Okay. So I want it to paste there. So just paste. And then I can still make... <clears throat> I can still make adjustments um, to, let's see, yeah, okay. I can still make, a <laughs> delete. 
I can still make adjustments to each individual thing, like delete it and stuff like that. But I've managed to move my whole block over because I have my well, the pad synth here, which I want to bring in there at A1. Okay. And then maybe to do the same thing again, let's just uh, hit this. Sorry, hit that one there. Select lasso or right. Let's select. You can select multi like this, but you can also deselect. So there are plenty of ways to to work in caustic, and then I could just select. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Select them individually like that once multi is selected, okay? And then the same thing again, I could just go to here and go copy, paste. And then for my last section here, okay, for my <laughs> for my last section, I can add my fairground organ pattern one there, okay. And then we could go mix it and stuff like that. But I'm just going to play this this one part, okay. And I'm going to have follow switched on. Go to song and hopefully this will work out okay. Before I go, <clears throat> and uh, and before I finish this one, because I've gone on for too long, really, I just want to show you a quick trip up, tip about looping. If you want to loop a particular section, you just touch in the timeline here, and sorry, touch in the timeline, and then draw out, and the section that you draw will be will be looped. But you can start it from any point you like. But that will just keep looping around so you can go mix it and work on it and stuff, you know? To get rid of the loop, you just drag it the other way and it'll disappear. Uh, you can jump to your timeline here, down here. And uh, yeah, so that's the basic. I just wanted to give you the basic overview. There's tons and tons more stuff to do. So we'll do it in another video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Consider becoming a Patreon. There'll be things popping up all over the place about now. And uh, for you to, uh, other videos for you to watch and stuff. And uh, I will see you guys later. <laughs>